the presentation of Toledo Stories is made possible in part by Key Bank, celebrating the strength of our region's history and supporting the promise of its future. Key Bank, achieve anything. And by the generous financial support of viewers like you. Thank you. Hello, I'm Tim Messer Cruz from the University of Toledo. The Oak Openings region was the lifelong focus of study for botanist and Bowling Green professor Edwin Lincoln Mosley. He had a reputation for being frugal, and it has been said that he saved money by making his own tomato soup when dining out. He merely stirred ketchup into a cup of hot water brought to him by the waiter. The eccentricity of his personality was only outdone by the meticulousness of his work. Through numerous publications, a hundred trips to the region, and a lifetime of dedication, Edwin Lincoln Mosley ensured that the importance of the Oak Openings region would not be lost. And now, Toledo Stories presents the Oak Openings region, discovering our natural heritage. The Oak Openings region is much more than any one park. It spans miles of Northwest Ohio and is a very rare occurrence in nature. It provides us with beautiful landscapes and creatures that aren't found in many other places. Twelve thousand years ago, much of North America was a block of solid ice. Glaciers covered the continent. As the glaciers retreated north, they left behind volumes of water. As the ice melted, the Great Lakes were formed, leaving areas in the Midwestern United States to become a shoreline for the lakes. Part of this prehistoric shoreline ran through the area now known as Northwest Ohio. At that time, the city of Toledo would have been hundreds of feet below the water. Over thousands of years, the water slowly receded, leaving behind the modern-day Great Lakes, sand ridges, and the Great Black Swamp. These prehistoric beach ridges were used by the American Indians to travel through the swamp. The Indians also maintained the oak savannas with fire after seeing how the land benefited from natural fires. Burning allowed certain species to thrive and kept the lands open for hunting. The sandy soil of the Oak Openings region was a high and dry contrast to the great black swamp that surrounded it. A group of settlers from Chillicothe, Ohio, took up arms and trudged north to fight in the War of 1812. One of these soldiers, known as Private Williams, was keeping a journal about their grueling travels through the unsettled great black swamp. Then one day, the writings changed. As the soldiers broke out of the dense swamp into the openings, they were overwhelmed by what they saw. The soldier wrote, These plains are covered with a most luxuriant growth of grass and herbs and an endless variety of beautiful native flowers, representing all the colors of the rainbow and loading the atmosphere with their perfume. What a rich field this is for a botanist. They were witnesses to the meeting ground of the eastern forest and the western prairies. The soldiers' accounts are the first written record of the Oak Openings region. While settlers cut down forests and drained the land, transforming it into farmland, it was discovered that the lands in the Oak Openings region were too sandy for most crops. The Oak Openings was wasteland. The farmers couldn't earn a living in the oak openings. That was a problem. The oak openings were spared from being cut and plowed under. Because of their poor soils, the oak openings had escaped its first threat of destruction. The land was left undeveloped and considered worthless to the farmer. But the scientific community saw the land in a very different light. The oak openings captured the curiosity of one man with a special interest in natural areas. Edwin Lincoln Mosley was a botanist and a professor at what is now Bowling Green State University. Mosley 
traveled west of Bowling Green out into that sandy country and made a lot of these discoveries about the remarkable plant life of the sand country, which was so different from the rest of Ohio. He was a meticulous record keeper, um, and he every place he went, he could give you an idea about how many plants of every species he saw. He might make a, uh, a pressed record. Uh, he would press the plant to document that it was there, but he also included notations about how many others of that plant were there. We often use that information as a, as a foundation to work from so that we understand what we need to strive for when we're restoring a lot of these habitats on the preserve. Um, he wrote what we often refer to as the Bible on the oak openings, the, the flora of the oak openings. Printed as an Ohio Academy of Science paper in 1928, it is still used as the basis for all study in the oak openings region. Included in the paper was a map documenting the boundary of the oak openings. Without the aid of large machinery, modern measuring technology, or satellite imaging, Mosley charted the 130 square mile area. In fact, this map is still the basis for what is considered the oak openings. And using the map that he made, uh, there are a number of new tools available to us where we can also learn what all the soils are and uh, actually we're uh, expanding the Mosley uh, map to understand exactly where this sand dune was in 10,000 years ago. Other naturalists began studying the area's soil types and the unusual plants that grew in them. Jane Forsythe's life work emphasized how soil characteristics, the geological um, inheritance, if you will, um, dictates where plants end up. And the oak openings is this amazing example of that. This environment provided a special niche habitat for very specific types of animals. Because it was home to rare plants, insects, and animals, the oak openings became a hot spot for scientific study. The land, once considered useless, now had the attention of the naturalist community. The same year that Mosley published his paper, the Metro Parks of the Toledo area was formed. The board president at the time, W. W. Knight, took an immediate interest in the Oak Openings region. Today, three Metro Parks make their home within the region. Wildwood, Secor, and Oak Openings Preserve Metro Parks. They all provide wonderful places for picnicking. Wildwood has historic buildings and nature trails. Secor Metro Park is home for the National Center for Nature Photography. And the Oak Openings Preserve Metro Park, which shares its name with the region, offers a wide variety of activities within its 4,000 acres. Whether spending family time around Mallard Lake, butterfly watching in the prairies, going for a walk through the sand dunes, or horseback riding on the miles of trails, there are numerous recreational opportunities. Realizing the importance of the region, the Ohio Department of Natural Resources obtained land in 1948. In the 1960s, the Division of Natural Areas and Preserves acquired more land. Today, ODNR manages three areas in the region, Lou Campbell and Irwin Prairie State Nature Preserves, and the Maumee State Forest. The state had a post-World War II effort to increase the number of forest land in Ohio, and so they uh, had the opportunity to, to purchase some of this land in the area, and, and that was the beginning of Maumee State Forest. The state nature preserves offer a look into the rare and endangered habitats. In 1972, recognizing the need to preserve more habitat, the Nature Conservancy procured acreage within the Oak Openings region. Kitty Todd Nature Preserve is a major draw for naturalists eager to see rare native species. The oak savannas and the open tall grass prairies are ideal places for birders to spend a day. The Oak Openings has long been known to uh, naturalists for many years as a really special place and today it's becoming more and more known to just general people in the population because it has more rare species than any other place in the state of Ohio. 
Uh, there are over 180 what we call state-listed rare plants and animals that occur in this region, and that's just an enormous number for a relatively small area of the state. And probably even more significant than that, there are five globally rare plant communities, which also in includes animals, but we define them as plant communities. Because of the vision of early preservationists, Northwest Ohio still has woodlands and prairies reserved for bird watching, trails for hiking, biking, and horseback riding, fields for picnics, and natural areas preserving animal habitat. Like many other large cities, Toledo, Ohio saw a decline in downtown industrial work. Beginning in the 1960s, the population started to migrate outside of the city limits and opted for a suburban life. A majority of the movement was a westward expansion through Springfield Township and into the Oak Openings region. The land that was useless to humans for agriculture and left as a habitat for plant and animal species has since become a desirable place to build a home. But this desire to build homes in the Oak Openings region creates a problem. Humans aren't as cooperative as the native species when it comes to sharing habitat. In order to meet the needs of the population, more and more residential and commercial developments are being constructed beyond the western boundary of Toledo. As land use increases, greater stress is put upon the fragile habitats that support rare species. The animals rely on the region for habitat, food, and for migratory stopovers. This is probably one of the biggest migrations of uh, birds of prey and also smaller warblers. Birds coming down from the north in Canada come down to the northern edge of Lake Erie and they get all funneled across that shoreline heading back to their wintering grounds, some going as far south as the Amazon basin in South America. So we have a real global connection with the rest of the world right here uh, through the Oak Openings region. The various habitats and plant communities in the Oak Openings region each play a valuable role. The most noticeable habitat that exists in the Oak Openings region is the sand barren community. It is hard to miss the sand dunes and desert-like plant life. Most people wouldn't believe that a species of cactus, the prickly bear, grows native right here in Northwest Ohio. Although the greatest example of sand dunes are found in the Oak Openings Preserve Metro Park, they exist throughout the region in preserves and even in people's backyards. Another community found in the Oak Openings Preserve Metro Park is the Tall Grass Prairie. These prairies are home for Big Blue Stem, Blazing Star, and different types of goldenrod. And one of the best examples of tall grass prairies is at Kitty Todd Preserve. There are different types of prairies. Just north of Kitty Todd Preserve is Irwin Prairie State Nature Preserve, home of one of the Earth's rarest plant communities, the wet prairie. The amount of life inside of those, of those wet prairies, uh, usually they're only a few inches deep, but yet the invertebrates that are swimming within the water, the plants that are coming up out of it, uh, the turtles, the salamanders, the frogs, there is so much that lives in these wet prairies. Uh, they really are a very unique habitat. Uh, from Irwin Prairie in the north down to the wet prairies at Maumee State Forest, uh, we once had a much larger wet prairie, about seven miles long, that ran through the oak openings. And uh, these areas are very unique for northwestern Ohio and, uh, and Ohio in general. Wetlands are extremely important and can be found in many different forms. While Secor Metro Park has a swamp forest, Maumee State Forest is home to what is known as a muck farm. It's known as the muck farm because of its high organic muck-like soil and also for the fact that it was farmed back in the 40s before being purchased by the state. The Oak Openings region couldn't exist without the oak savannas. These environments are crucial for the existence of certain plant and animal species. 
The best known of these are the wild lupin and the Carner blue butterfly. This endangered species was reintroduced to the region through efforts by the Toledo Zoo and the Nature Conservancy. These areas provide us with breathtaking sights. There are many plant communities that still need protecting. As development expands into the region, these habitats are being threatened. Many of the species that we have today can be extirpated from the oak openings in our lifetime. Uh, many of the species that appear to be doing quite well actually may not be doing as well as we think. Uh, these small fragmented habitats that we call parks and preserves oftentimes do not have the populations that are required in order to stay viable. This unique region, which narrowly escaped the farmer's plow almost 200 years ago, is now in danger of being bulldozed over. To many people, it would go unnoticed. But for those experts working in the field, all it takes is one look at population trends to see where the future of oak openings is headed. We know that there's going to be growth and good, well-planned growth is something that we certainly accept, but we are consistently losing land that should be saved every year. There are so many wonderful acres which would make this a much stronger ecosystem. Conservation groups are well aware of the threat to the region. As part of a 1997 campaign to raise public awareness, the Nature Conservancy released a list of the last 200 great places on Earth. Included in that list was the Oak Openings region of Northwest Ohio. This announcement surprised many local people who had lived in the area their whole lives, but never understood its environmental significance. There are very few of these quality areas that remain, especially here in Northwest Ohio. This is the only one in Northwest Ohio, and there's only a handful here in the Midwest. The Oak Openings is, is just as special in its own way as the Everglades in Florida or the Redwood Forest out in California. Um, each of these types of ecosystems has real value, and in the Oak Openings region, you have some of the rarest habitat that remains in Ohio. And uh, we've focused a lot of our work on acquiring land so that we can preserve it for future generations and to preserve the biodiversity there. Other groups have been working to preserve the Oak Openings land from being developed. The Black Swamp Conservancy continues to work with citizens and businesses to set aside land for natural areas. The Ohio Division of Natural Resources and the Metro Parks of the Toledo area were always seen as providing a place for human interaction with nature. In addition to providing an area for recreation, these groups are constantly doing land management work. These activities include clearing areas, planting native plants, and monitoring habitat conditions. Most areas you need to save the trees to save the ecosystem. Here in the Oak Openings region we have an overabundance of trees which are keeping the sunlight from getting to the forest floor where, where it's really needed by a lot of the rare plants. While all these groups had their individual priorities, the issues facing the Oak Openings region were too great for one organization to deal with on its own. The groups were forced to reevaluate how they would preserve this very special land. To make anything really happen in the conservation world, one must work together, not opposing one another. And there was a very strong general feeling that if we all work together, we were going to be much more successful. In 2000, the Green Ribbon Initiative was formed to bring the groups together for one cause, preserving the Oak Openings region. The reason for getting together is to create corridors of habitat for plants, animals, and people. Time in, time out, it's been shown that communities are much more valuable if they're developed in a way that preserves these green space areas, that allows for parks for people, allows people the chance to get out and appreciate them. And I think that's going to be the long-term key for the Northwest Ohio area is to find that balance between what we develop and what we don't develop. The organizations bring to the table their own areas of expertise. 
They are currently working with volunteer groups, landowners, farmers, local and state legislators, and other nature groups to safeguard as much land as possible. We want to purchase this land from willing sellers to create an even larger protected oak openings area. But more important than preserving the land is making people aware of how special the area is and why it should be preserved. We want to raise the awareness of the public in the Toledo area as to what an important biological jewel this is. And I really think it's our big challenge as is, is educators to uh, help people appreciate that more and more. What used to be a save everything, destroy nothing philosophy has now become a wise use approach. It's not where you leave your hands off the landscape. Humans have always interacted with this landscape. And that's so important to understand is that humans have a role. We have a niche here, just like the animals and plants to play here. And humans always have ever since the last ice age. Humans are not separate from nature, but are in fact right in the middle of it. Naturalists believe that if business owners keep that in mind and set aside a piece of land for nature, the impact would be tremendous. Some businesses have set aside property as a demonstration garden. These areas show off native plants and preserve a little piece of the Oak Openings region. Some might think that the naturalists would be fighting to put an end to commercial development, and that may have been an approach in previous decades, but naturalists today have a more realistic perspective. It's not about saying you know, no more development, we must stop development. It's about finding that balance between the two so that we can all benefit in the end. We need to see an increase in what we often refer to as the conservation ethic. We need to see the local people in the, in the community develop this, real, this keen interest about what's in their own backyard and valuing their own heritage. Because not only is this natural heritage, but it's really a part of all of our historical heritage too. I mean, this is what the landscape was like historically. It's unique. You don't find this in other areas of the country or other areas of the world. It's only found around the Great Lakes region for the most part, and one of the last examples is here in the Oak Openings. One Oak Openings resident has made it his goal to landscape his entire lot with native species. I grew up down the street here, and all through my life I've been going out to Oak Openings Metro Park, and so when I found the piece of land and realized that I was in fact in the Oak Openings region, I became excited to maintain the natural habitat. It's one of my hobbies, you could say, um, but this is the result. Steve Maluski has been working on his property for four years. A lot of people, when they first get out here, they're surprised. They don't think they're in Northwest Ohio anymore, and I think the whole region can be that way. In order to ensure the future of the Oak Openings region, it isn't necessary for every landowner to mimic Steve's yard. By setting aside an area on the property, species are allowed to interact with one another. Property owners who are serious about preserving a section of their land can do so through land easements. It would be good for the township because it would preserve the natural areas. And it would be good for the people who sign the conservation easement and that they get a tax credit. Development of that property is limited and it is uh, put in the title of the property. So when it changes hands, it cannot be developed. Planting native plants is another way of preserving the oak openings for the future. Well, one of the easiest things that a private citizen can do is simply purchase some of the native plants. They are for sale in Lucas County and again planting the native plants is a low maintenance alternative to planting something not native. People use native plants in their yard for a variety of reasons. One is to attract butterflies and hummingbirds and they do a great job at that. Another is to preserve um, the, the local genotypes of plants, to put in native plants in their yards because they're more maintenance free um, and also because they're helping to preserve habitat. Just like the, uh, the rainforest is being lost at an amazing rate, our local 
plant communities are being lost at an amazing rate, especially in the Oak Openings region as the development hits and moves west from the city of Toledo. So these plants are at risk and people are helping to preserve those in their yard. They also add them because they're beautiful and um, there's, there's nothing that, that is more beautiful than some of the native wildflowers that you'll find in the Oak Openings region. Citizens can get involved even if they don't own land within the region. The organizations are always willing to take on eager volunteers to help with land management. If you want to get more involved, there are opportunities at the Nature Conservancy's Kitty Todd Preserve. I'm a member of the Oak Opening Region Preservation Alliance, and the Metro Parks has a lot of land within the region that they do restoration on on a volunteer basis. Many community organizations have already donated their time, including a youth volunteer group called Zoo Teams. They participated in a clearing of dense woods to increase the Oak Openings plant community. The future of the Oak Openings region is still unclear, and there are many decisions to be made. I'll let people know that you care about the Oak Openings, because if the decision makers never hear from the community that people do care, why should they care? And they need to hear from the people who vote for them. Some naturalists feel that the laws that have been in place give priority to businesses and put the environment on the back burner. The township is really limited by in the state of Ohio in their laws in just how much protection we can offer to natural areas. And as it exists right now, a developer can come in, clear cut, regrade, and then come to us with a proposed site plan. And this is very disheartening. We just saw this with a critical oak openings area where this was done on eight, eight acres. That eight acres had a wetland soil and it was heavily wooded. All that woods was cut down and the, uh, the soil was destroyed as far as being a wetlands. The oak openings region really offers us a chance to reconnect and allow for a biological and a recreational corridor that runs through. I think the goal of all of the conservation entities that are involved in working in the oak openings is to, to look for a little bit of a better balance between how much land we develop and use as humans and we all need houses to live in and we all drive on roads and, and use electricity but uh, we're looking for a balance where we can develop and maintain a community that has real long-term viability, a community that has all those human needs uh, the typical development needs, but also the need to preserve the green space. No one person can guarantee the future of the Oak Openings region. Cooperative efforts like the Green Ribbon Initiative are a good start. Raising public awareness about this rare and beautiful treasure found in our own backyard is just one way to preserve the Oak Openings region for future generations. For more information, visit oakopen.com. You can find out more about this region by visiting the websites for the Oak Openings and for the Black Swamp Conservancy. You can also find out more about our region's history by visiting Toledo's Attic and WGTE.org. For Toledo Stories, I'm Tim Messer-Cruz. Thanks for joining us. I'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.
The presentation of Toledo Stories is made possible in part by Key Bank, celebrating the strength of our region's history and supporting the promise of its future. Key Bank, achieve anything. And by the generous financial support of viewers like you. Thank you.